I would like to uh, thank the organizers for inviting me to give this presentation. It's, it's great to be in, in Canada and in Toronto. My last time in Toronto was 21 years ago, so it was time to come back. So I have no conflicts of interest, and I'm an employee of the University of Eastern Finland and Kopio University Hospital. So first few words about the recommendations for diabetic patients uh, regarding dietary fat. So uh, the um, several recommendations, they are very consistent regarding the quality of dietary fat so that the uh, proportion of saturated fat should be decreased. But regarding the proportion of energy nutrients, there's flexibility. And the recommendations uh, of the American Diabetes Association and the British and Swedish recommendations state that there are many studies with methodological unsoundness, so uh, it is difficult to draw conclusions regarding the optimal proportion of energy nutrients. Uh, the Canadian recommendations recommend uh, the proportion of fat to be 20 to 35 percent of energy intake, and they uh, specifically state that carbohydrates uh, uh, can co comprise up to 60% of energy intake when low GI carbohydrate sources are mainly used. So uh, for diabetic patients, individual goals regarding the proportion of energy nutrients can be set as long as the quality of dietary fat and carbohydrates is, is taken carefully into consideration. Uh, before I go to the dietary patterns, uh, I would like to uh, present you a, a few things about the systematic re uh, literature review that we performed for the Nordic nutrition recommendations uh, uh, about two years ago. Uh, so we had four research questions, and, and as you see here, glucose and insulin concentrations, as well as type 2 diabetes risk, was uh, included in, in, as, a, as an endpoint or, or outcomes in these research questions. <clears throat> Regarding insulin sensitivity and serum or plasma insulin concentrations, uh, we found that uh, those diets that were enriched in monounsaturated fat compared to saturated fat, they uh, increased uh, or uh, increased uh, uh, insulin sensitivity measured by insulin sensitivity index or HOMA IR, and the strength of, of uh, the level of strength of evidence was considered as, as probable, and the same goes with fasting plasma or serum insulin concentrations. Regarding type 2 diabetes risk, uh, it, it was found that polyunsaturated fat or linoleic acid itself, as compared to carbohydrates or saturated fat, uh, has an e inverse association with type 2 diabetes risk, and, and the ev evidence, level of evidence was considered as, as probable. Regarding long chain omega 3 uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids, the conclusion was unlikely, uh, and this uh, needs uh, more specific attention. So uh, when we look at those studies, when, when the subjects uh, had gotten mainly the uh, long-chain omega-3 fatty acids from fish or supplements, there were studies that, uh, which showed even increased risk of type 2 diabetes. But when these fatty acids were received from, from fish, so the subjects had been eating fish, then there was no increased risk. And actually, in some studies, there was protection against type 2 diabetes. So we have to take into consideration the source of long-chain omega-3 fatty acids. And regarding uh, biomarkers, uh, it was shown that in plasma phospholipids and cholesterol esters, linoleic acid had, had an inverse association with uh, type 2 diabetes. Uh, the level of evidence was suggestive. And, uh, uh, saturated fatty acids in uh, phospholipids and cholesterol esters had a positive association with type 2 diabetes with the uh, same uh, strength of, of evidence. And then I move on to the dietary patterns, and, uh, and uh, we have heard about Mediterranean and healthy Nordic 
diet patterns this morning. I, I have few slides are the same as we have seen earlier uh, this morning, and then I have a, a few slides regarding the DASH diet, so dietary approaches to stop hypertension. All of these dietary patterns emphasize the quality of dietary fat, <coughs> so the intake of saturated fat should be decreased and the intake of uh, unsaturated fat should be increased. So here you see the um, systematic review of Shiranian co-workers regarding the effects uh, of DASH, DASH diet on risk of, for developing type 2 diabetes. And uh, they, they found that uh, there was a reduced fasting insulin concentration, especially, especially in those studies that lasted uh, uh, for more than 16 weeks. And here you see the results of the fasting insulin concentration. So especially those who, who had metabolic syndrome or dyslipidemia, they, uh, they had protection. Uh, but those who, who didn't have any, any metabolic syndrome or dyslipidemia, they didn't benefit <coughs> of, of the DASH diet regarding fasting insulin concentration. Regarding fasting glucose concentration, there was no, no effect. And there was no effect on HOMA IR either. And then there are uh, 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 three studies regarding DASH and uh, gestational diabetes. This, in this study, they have 52 women. Uh, this was a randomized control triad, and the subjects were randomly uh, assigned either to a DASH diet or a control diet for 40 weeks during the uh, gestational weeks of uh, 24 to 28. And uh, the diets uh, prescribed uh, for the intervention group uh, was, was uh, following very strictly the um, principles of the DASH diet. So it was rich in food, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and low-fat dairy products. And it had low amounts of saturated fat, cholesterol, and refined grains. And the total <coughs> intake of sodium uh, corresponded to about six grams of, of salt per day. Uh, in the intervention group, uh, there were less cesarean sections, lower percentage of the mothers needed insulin therapy, and there was lower birth weight. And uh, there was no effect on birth length or APGAR score. And uh, in two other studies, it, the design was very similar. And uh, in the first study, they found decreases in fasting plasma glucose, insulin, and HOMA IR. And in the other study, they didn't actually find uh, a difference in fasting plasma glucose. It was a borderline significance. That, but they, uh, they performed an OGTT, and they found decreases, uh, decreases in plasma glucose concentrations at 60, 120, and 180 minutes. Also decreases in HbA1c and, and uh, uh, total cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, total to HDL cholesterol ratio, and total triglycerides and systolic blood pressure were found. Regarding the Mediterranean uh, diet, by a very recent um, systematic review by, by Sleiman uh, and co-workers, uh, they stated that most of the studies showed favorable effects of the Mediterranean diet of, on glycemic control and cardiovascular diseases, although a certain uh, degree of controversy rema remains regarding some issues such as obesity. And in the Molisani uh, study, uh, the Mediterranean diet, uh, uh, the effect of Mediterranean diet was studied on mortality in subjects with, uh, with di uh, di uh, type 2 diabetes. And they had about 2,000 uh, subjects. This was a prospective cohort study with a median follow up time of four years. And they found that the traditional Mediterranean diet associated with reduced risk of both total and cardiovascular mortality in diabetic subjects. But this was independent of the severity of, of the disease. They, for example, look, look at those subjects who had, who had uh, frequent hypoglycemia or, or so, and, and there was no, no difference between the groups. Uh, and uh, the major con contributions in the diet were offered by moderate alcohol intake, high consumption of cereals, fruits, and nuts, and reduced intake of dairy and meat products. And this uh, uh, figure you, show, uh, you saw earlier today, so this was about the Predimet-Roy study with 418 subjects with four-year follow-up, 
and with these uh, three groups, so, so the um, uh, Mediterranean diet group, uh, uh, subjects in the Mediterranean diet group had much less type uh, 2 diabetes than, than in the group that was actually called low fat in, in the study, but it, it had 40% of energy intake as fat, whereas the other groups had 41%, so, so maybe this low fat is not that an uh, appropriate term to, to uh, uh, describe this diet. And uh, as uh, uh, it was pointed out earlier today, uh, there was no change in body weight and, and physical activity. And Ulf presented this healthy Nordic diet very thoroughly. I just would like to remind that there was a, a, a very nice result regarding plasma insulin concentration in addition to serum lipid profile and, and body weight and, and systolic blood pressure. Uh, Ulf was talking about the SISTA uh, diet study. Uh, I'm not talking about that, but uh, in Kuopio we, we performed a, a SISTEM study, uh, which was actually a pre-study for, for the SISTA study. And we had uh, three groups there. Uh, the system at group had low insulin response crane products, fatty fish three times per week, and bilberries daily. And the healthy uh, crane uh, group had uh, low insulin response crane products, and the control group had high insulin response crane products. They were prohibited of eating bilberries, and uh, they were instructed to consume only one fish meal per week. And uh, what we found was that um, uh, in the system at group, all uh, two-hour glucose uh, area under the curve uh, during the OGT uh, of, of glucose, insulinogenic index and disposition index, they all improved in the, uh, in the uh, system at group. And the two-hour glucose improved also in, in the health crane group. And then, as Ulf pointed out, uh, the diabetes, pre uh, diabetes prevention studies actually uh, it, it very thoroughly uh, follow the um, principles of a healthy Nordic diet because it, it was performed at, uh, at my department, and no, I know exactly how the, the subjects were instructed. Uh, but no one talked at that time, this was launched in 1993, no one talked at that time healthy Nordic diet. So, uh, but uh, I think we can consider this as, as a study, a study applying uh, principles of healthy Nordic, Nordic diet. So there was weight loss in obese subjects. If you went obese, you, you uh, didn't need to, ha uh, uh, need to lose weight. And then there were these um, uh, three calls regarding diet. So dietary fat was uh, supposed to be around 30% of energy, saturated fat below 10% of energy, and dietary fiber uh, 15 grams per 1,000 kilocalories, and physical activity at least for or more than four hours per week. And here you see the, uh, the results that you have seen actually, I think, many times before. Uh, but this is very impressive that in the intervention group, uh, this is 15 year follow up now, uh, the difference between the groups regarding type 2 diabetes incidence remains. And here you see the type 2 diabetes incidence according to the goals reached at uh, three years when, when the intervention was actually stopped because the, um, the um, ethical group thought that the difference between the groups is so, so uh, big that it's unethical uh, to continue the intervention. But you see uh, uh, that uh, the more goals you achieve, the um, uh, less was your type 2 diabetes risk. And then uh, here at the end of my presentation, a few words about inflammation, which is very significant uh, 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 factor behind hyperglycemia, affecting liver by increasing glucose pro production, affecting pancreas by uh, de uh, decreasing insulin secretion, and affecting muscle and adipose tissues by, by decreasing insulin sensitivity. The, the arrow there is, is hidden. And um, Odegaard and Chavla have, have presented this, this uh, summary that increased proportion of saturated fatty acids in serum, they cause cellular stress, which is associated with insulin resistance. There also seems to be direct effect on insulin resistance as tissue inflammation. And uh, 
uh, via increased uh, serum glucose uh, concentration, there will be frank metabolic diseases and clinical consequen consequences. So inflammation is, uh, is very important behind hypoglycemia and glucose me impaired glucose metabolism, and serum uh, saturated fatty acids seem to, to um, uh, be uh, one big issue behind this uh, phenomenon. And here you see uh, results from the National Institute for Health and Welfare, Helsinki, Finland. This group actually, uh, they call the healthy Nordic diet as the Baltic Sea diet, but this is exactly the, the same. And, and in the DILCOM study, they, uh, they cross-sectionally assessed uh, uh, the uh, inflammatory markers related to obesity and the Baltic Sea diet score. So the higher score you had, the more components of the healthy Nordic uh, diet you had, the lower was your uh, high sensitive CRP level. So to conclude, uh, there's flexibility in the proportion of energy nutrients for, uh, regarding glucose metabolism and, and diets for type 2 diabetes, but we have to strictly keep in mind that we have to pay attention to uh, both the quality of dietary fat and the quality of carbohydrates. This is extremely important. And the dietary patterns rich in, in healthy oils are beneficial for both prevention and treatment of diabetes. Thank you.